Greetings entrepreneurs, I wanna welcome you to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about why you need to have an SOP in your business. And that stands for Standard Operating Procedure. So if this is something that you're interested in, keep watching. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to talk about what an SOP is and why you need one. Maybe you never heard that term before, and, and if you didn't, I'm going to break it down. And this is something that you want to make sure that you start implementing in your business as soon as possible because it's going to help you tremendously. So let me give you a couple examples of what an SOP is, and then we can go into the breakdown of how you can start creating one for yourself. Now, the first thing I want to show you is a bank teller. Now, if you've ever worked at a bank, you will know there is a certain procedure for each thing that you need to do. There is a procedure for how you are to handle cash. There is a procedure for when there are maybe high dollar amounts that you would have to get approval from a manager before you accept that type of bill. There is a procedure for handling checks. There's a procedure for handling deposits and withdrawals. There are procedures at the end of the day that you would have to do a basic summary report in order to make sure that everything is balancing out correctly. So this is something that a bank teller has to do each day that they go to their job to ensure that everything is flowing in the order that it's supposed to flow. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is basically a secretary. Now, there's different secretaries. You may have a medical secretary, a secretary that's in a law firm, a secretary that's in a business firm, a corporation, and each of them have a standard procedure that they need to follow. Some will have to filter calls to the appropriate person. Some will have to type up documents. Some will have to do data entry. Some will have to file, maybe schedule appointments. There are so many different things that a specific industry or job will require that employee to do, but they have to follow it based on what is the best practice for that specific job. So let me give you a couple of examples of those type of industries that also follow uh, SOP. And it is vital because it helps for things to flow in a way where everybody hopefully is on the same page. Now, the next thing is you will see managers. They have a certain protocol that they have to follow to keep the employees in order, to keep certain documents together, to make sure they are giving the reports back to their higher ups in a way that is conducive for for them to meet their goals. A teacher, they have a curriculum that they have to follow. They have to submit it to the board at the end of that cycle or period or whatever. So they have to follow a specific plan of action in order for them to know that they're staying on goal or on task. The same thing with the doctor. They have a certain procedure that they have to follow. They can't just do what they want to do because this is why they have malpractice insurance because if something goes left and they didn't follow certain procedures, this is the reason why they have to carry malpractice insurance. And to me, one of the most important ones that need to follow this type of procedure is a pilot. Because if you are someone who loves to fly, that pilot has to follow a standard uh, plan in order to ensure the safety of its flyers to make sure that they are getting to their destination safely. If there's anything going wrong with the aircraft or they're in turbulence or anything, that pilot should know there are certain procedures that is in place, put in place for the event of emergency or whatever that is. And he has to follow those procedures in order to make sure that everyone makes it landing, you know, to be able to land safely. So now, the next thing I want to um, basically give you um, a breakdown is what is an SOP? So I found this definition off of Wikipedia and it says that a SOP is a standard operating procedure. It is a set of one step-by-step -step instructions compiled by an organization, your firm, even though you're one person, to help workers or yourself carry out routine operations. An SOP aims to achieve what? Efficiency and quality output. 
also uniformity of performance while reducing miscommunication and failure to comply with industry standards. So my thing is, when you look at this, you'll say, well, I'm not a corporation. I don't have a lot of, you know, I don't have a team yet. It's just me. But the point that I'm trying to make here is you need to basically know what it is you do in your business, the tasks that you do, and how do you go and attack each task each time you do it. Are you missing certain key components that would help you have a better flow, a better quality of output? Because even if you are a solopreneur at this point, the point is at some time in you know the near future, your business may grow. Your business may take on a, a new turn or twist. You may rebrand yourself and now you may bring on other people. So now you want to be able to let them know how your business runs and how your business operates. And this is the reason why you need to even hold yourself accountable to have certain procedures in place. So when you bring on someone else, they will understand how your business flows. So my question to you is, is your business just winging it? Are you just approaching each day that you get up to work on your business? Is there no direction? Are you just getting up and saying, oh, well, I need to create posts for social media. Oh, well, I need to create a YouTube video. Oh, I need to create, you know, a, a PDF to get people to sign up for my email list. So each of those tasks should have a procedure. So each time you're going to that, procedure even though it may be ingrained in your head you may already know what it is that you have to do but it is a good practice to write that down because it may be one day you will just having a, a, just a really frustrating day and you may forget something so it it is a good practice to open up a google docs which i do and for each task that i do in my business i have the step-by-step -step things that i need to do to accomplish that and I'll kind of show you a little example of the breakdown of how that looks. So let's continue. So do you have, and I'm just asking you these questions so you can now be clear and you will know what you need to do within your business. Do you have a written process for how you create content, for how you handle customer inquiries, for you how you handle customer complaints? For hiring, training employees, VAs, you may be a one man or one woman show right now, but it doesn't mean that at some point in your business, you may outsource something. It doesn't mean that you're bringing them on as a full time or part time employee. It could just mean that you need someone to help you with just one specific project or something that you need to, them to do. So is there a policy in place? So when they come to your system or to your software or whatever tools that you use in your business, do you have a procedure that they are to follow in order for them not to waste time on that project? which in turn could cost you even more money because time is money. So you want to make it very effortless and you want to onboard them quickly so this way they can get the job done and they know the requirements of that job. So you also want to make sure that you have a process for software because you never know when there's someone that may come on and do a collaboration with you or want to partner with you or something and then you're using specific software that they are not accustomed to so do you have something in place that will help onboard them again very quickly where you're not wasting time so the next point i want to make is this is an example when I'm doing a blog post, now this is just something I just wrote down and this is what I have also in my um, documents in my Google Docs. So when I'm creating a blog post, the first thing I want to do is I want to research a topic based on what I believe my audience is looking for. I want to make sure that I know what it is that they're looking for. So when I'm creating this topic, it's going to be something that they're going to be interested in. I want to make sure my headline is optimized with the keyword, but it's also a headline that is going to grab their attention. I want to make sure that that blog post has keywords in it. Again, I'm doing keyword keyword research because I'm not speaking my language based on me being an entrepreneur. I'm speaking the language of my audience based on their frustrations, whatever language it is that they're using, but they're being overwhelmed, whatever it is. I want to make sure that is part of my blog because now I'm hitting the, the key feelings and emotions that they're having based on that specific topic, right? 
So now I wanna go and I wanna find photos related to that article. I wanna make sure within that blog, I'm not only giving them the written content, but I'm giving them visual content, whether it's in the form of a video or an image, or maybe even a link to an audio podcast that I have that is on a, on a same thread of that specific topic that I'm talking about. Within that blog post, I want to give examples, whether it's examples that from my own experience, examples that I research, or maybe examples from another blog that has given the same type of, you know, given some type of insight on that specific topic. Then I want to link to a corresponding article on my website, meaning if I'm talking about something on my blog that is email marketing, then I want to link uh, to my previous article on email marketing that maybe have a different component or a different twist on how to do email marketing. So I want to link back to that article. So I'm giving that reader such a well-rounded view of how to put this specific topic in practice. I'm not just giving them one view of it. I'm giving them even a deeper view of how to work that out or how to basically go and produce that type of content. So now I want to create a backlink to a resource or an article on the subject and where you can get very strategic with backlinks is, OK, you can ask someone if you visit a website and it has great information on a topic that you're talking about. So you do want to go and reach out to the person or the author of that blog and ask them, do you mind if I backlink to this article because I wrote this topic, you know, and it's in alignment with what you just written. So I want to make sure that my visitors that come to my website have a well-rounded view of this topic. And I think that your blog helps to do that. So this way, when people visit their blog, which is going to have your link, it's going to link back to your website where you're going to get new eyeballs on your content. And then another thing that I like to do is if I'm linking to a resource, maybe a tool, productivity tool or whatever that may be, then if they have an affiliate, then I'm going to sign up to be an affiliate. So when that visitor clicks to sign up or get whatever product or service, then I'm going to get a kickback of that, but it's going to be at no cost to my visitor. Then I want to make sure that I'm writing in my meta description using the keywords that I've researched for this topic. Then I'm going to make sure that I'm writing basically this description of the image that I'm using also within that topic, right? So the next thing is I want to make sure that my spell check is correct. And this is something that in the beginning, I, my spelling was off, my grammar was off. But let me show you another good trick or hack, which you whatever you want to call it, is I go in, I open up a Google Docs and I start writing my blog post in Google Docs because Google Docs helps you with spell check. It helps you with grammar. It lets you know when something is wrong. So that way it can correct it or you can go in and correct it. And then once I'm finished creating my blog post within Google Docs, then I'll just copy it and I'll paste it into my WordPress website where I do use WordPress. Then now, now the, the, the next couple of different tasks as you're creating or I'm creating a blog post means now I got to create social media posts related to the blog post because I want to get the message out there of what it is that I'm talking about because I want people to come to my website. So that has its own procedures. It has its own set of tasks within that. Also the call to action. If I want to get people to sign up for my email list. If I have a free download PDF, a video, an audio podcast that I want them to sign up to get access to, then I still have a certain procedure that I have to follow to create that call to action. Am I going to create that call to action in Canva? Am I going to create that call to action as a video, as a podcast? So all of those different types of tasks all have a procedure that follows it. So if I know that this is something I'm going to create, then now I am judging based on the time that I'm going to have to do that. So this is going to help you so much because when you know that you're getting ready to do something within your business, then you are saying, okay, this is how long it's going to take me to knock this out. So you can actually time yourself to say, it, it takes me 
maybe half a day to create a blog post that has a call to action, that has email campaigns, that has social media posts. Maybe it may take you the whole day, depending on how detailed you are. Because to create an email campaign, which is number 13, it is a process, especially if you are nurturing that specific subscriber to a low cost offer or maybe a premium offer at some point in their journey of being a subscriber with you. So these are things that you need to take into consideration when it comes to creating any type of content for your business, that there should be a procedure, a standard operating procedure, which that's what SOP stands for, that you need to make sure that you have one for each task because it's going to help you so much because if you find different tools or different things that can help free up the time of you creating said T- project or task or whatever that is, then it's going to help reduce those co- those that time. And guess what? It's going to free you up time for it. free you up time to to not only just work, you know, in your business or on your business, but it's going to free you up time to promote what it is that you do, so you can get more clients and customers within your business. So the last part of this is just basically a manager and each activity you do in your business there needs to be a written process for it and that is basically to me a best business practice as an entrepreneur because you are letting not only yourself know but those who come to interact with you that you operate your business at a higher level of excellence and this is what you want others who work with you within your business to do also so i hope that this helps you if you have any questions please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below give me a like and a share and i will be back with you on the next video